All right, in this video, I'm going to talk about finding maximum and minimum values of a function of two variables. And <clears throat> what we're going to use is the second derivative test. And the second derivative test says the following. It says, suppose that the second partial derivatives of a function f are continuous on a disk with center a, b. And suppose that the partial with respect to x at some point a, b is 0, and the partial with respect to y at a, b is also 0. So those are going to be important little things. Those are, we're going to have to find those points, a, b. And then it says, once we have that, it says we're going to let d be this, this value where we take the second derivative. We'll take a partial with respect to x. And again, with respect to x at a, b, do the same thing with y. And then take the partial with respect, with respect to x and y. We'll plug our point a, b in there, evaluate this, and it says depending on the value we get out for this, this d value, it's going to help us conclude whether we have a maximum or a minimum. So it says if this d value is greater than 0 and the partial with respect to x, x is also greater than 0, we've got a minimum. If the second partial is less than 0 but d is greater than 0, we've got a maximum, a local maximum. And the last condition says that if d is simply less than 0, um, that point is neither a local maximum or a minimum. It's what we call a saddle point. So OK, so sorry for writing this all down. You've probably got this at some point. Let's do uh, my first example here. I don't know how many we can get through. These are kind of tedious problems. So for this function, f of xy equals xy times the quantity 1 minus x minus y, we're going to find any local maximums, local minimums, and saddle points. The first thing I would do is probably actually multiply this out. I don't want to take derivatives using the product or the product rule. So I'll get xy minus x squared times y, and then it looks like I'll get minus xy squared. So I'm going to calculate all the all the derivatives here. So it says if I take a partial with respect to x, so again, I'm taking the derivative with respect to x, so x is my variable. I'll get y minus 2xy minus y squared. If I take the partial with respect to y, OK, so now I'm treating y as my variable. I'll get, it looks like, x minus x squared minus 2xy. And now if I take um, the second partial with respect to x, OK, so now I'm taking the derivative of this one again, treating x as my variable. Well, y is a constant. That'll just go away. I'll get minus 2y, um, well, minus 0, because again, y is a variable. And likewise, my second partial with respect to y, now I'm treating y as the variable. So the first x minus x squared, those are just constants. That'll go away. I'll be left with simply negative 2x. All right, so now I've got all my partials. The next thing that I need to do here is simply solve. I need to figure out where the partial with respect to x equals 0, and also the same place, the same point that makes the partial with respect to y equals 0. All right, so let's see. So let me jot these back down. So if we set the partial with respect to x equal to 0, that means y minus 2xy minus y squared equals 0. And a lot of times, um, figuring out what makes the partials both equal to 0 is going to be kind of the tedious part. So one thing we can do here is definitely factor out a y. And then I'll be left with 1 minus 2x minus y equals 0. So from this, we're either going to get that y equals 0, or if we set the other piece, we'll get 1 minus 2x minus y equals 0. If we add y to both sides, we'll get then that y equals 1 minus 2x. OK, so now I'm going to take these conditions 
and plug that into the partial with respect to y when I set that equal to 0. Okay, so the partial with respect to y, we said that was x minus x squared minus 2xy. So let's see, if I plug in this condition now that y equals 0, if I plug in that y equals 0 and set this whole thing equal to 0, we'll get x minus x squared minus 2x times 0, or simply we'll get that we have x times 1 minus x, so we'll get that x equals 0 or x equals 1. So we know that x equals 0 and x equals 1 goes with the value of y equals 0. So that means we have these critical points of 0 comma 0 and also 1 comma 0. So those would be a couple that we'll have to check. We also need to plug in our other condition that y was equal to 1 minus 2x into my partial. Okay, so I'm going to plug that in and set it equal to 0 just like before. So now I'll have 0 equals x minus x squared and then minus 2x times y which is 1 minus 2x and now I'm just going to have to clean this up and simplify this down. So we'll have x minus x squared if I distribute I'll get negative 2x it looks like we'll get a positive 4x squared let's see 4x squared minus x squared is 3x squared and then I've got a negative 2x and a positive x that'll just give me negative x again I'll factor an x out and then I'll have 3x minus 1 and this again tells us now that either x equals 0 or x equals 1 third okay but in the last case we were plugging in y equals 0, now we're plugging in y equals 1 minus 2x. So if you go back up to this original y equals 1 minus 2x, we'll have to plug in x equals 0. If we plug in x equals 0, we'll see that y equals 1. So that'll give us again the point 0 comma 1. If I plug 1 third in for x, I'll get 1 minus 2 thirds, which is also 1 third. So my other point is going to be one third comma one third. So those are going to be my four points that I have to check. Okay, so we're getting closer. So those two along with the original two that we had. We've got to evaluate our D. So our D value again, the formula says we have to take the partial with respect to X, the second partial with respect to x, second partial with respect to y, the partial of x, then y, uh, x, and then y, all squared. So in this case, we're going to get negative 2y times, where are you at, negative 2x minus, and then I have to square all of this. I don't think I ever found it. So the one other derivative I'm missing is the partial with respect to x and then y. So if I take the derivative of this piece with respect to y, now y is my variable, I'll get uh, 1 minus 2x minus 2y. So that's what I would need to plug in there. 1 minus 2x minus 2y, it's a long problem, squared. And now you all can check my arithmetic. Um, so what you would have to do is, last but not least, you would have to take this D value and you would have to evaluate it at whoops, all of your critical points. 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, and 1 third comma one third. It actually turns out that if you check the first three, all of these turn out to give you negative one. And remember, if the d value is negative, you automatically have a saddle point. Okay, 
So that part's easy enough. Then if you plug in one third comma one third, let me see if I can't find my arithmetic here. Okay, I got this to be one third. Okay, so that's positive. So now we just need to check the second partial with respect to x at one third comma one third. And this turns out to be negative two thirds, which is less than zero. So that means at one third comma one third, we actually have a local maximum. Okay, so here's one example. I'll do another in another video. Hope this helps. Let me know if you have any questions.